Well, God bless you. Welcome to the Wonderful Words of Life radio program. We're going to be talking about the power of forgiveness today, and we'll be in Luke chapter 17. And before we begin, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you as we get into the Word of God today, Lord, that you're going to stir our hearts. Father, you're going to speak to us. You're going to give us revelation, Lord, and we thank you for it. Lovely Jesus, we love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So God, and direct us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we'll give you praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, like I said, we're in Luke chapter 17, and we're going to be talking about the power of forgiveness and how that forgiving others or accepting forgiveness from others. You know, part of our problem is that we fail to forgive ourselves. The things that we've done in the past, you know, they come up in our memory. And we have this idea that how can anybody love me or how can God love me? Well, he has and he does. Amen. Praise God. Amen. When you receive forgiveness from Christ, it's forever. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And so we're going to see here that forgiveness is an act of faith. But it is also a matter of faith, and it has nothing to do with feelings. It has everything to do with obeying uh, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and let's get into the Word of God. Luke chapter 17, we're going to be in verse 1. Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. Notice that. He says this, temptations to sin, offenses, that's really what that word's talking about. Temptations to sin will be surely come to everyone, all of us. We're all in the same boat. Amen. I know it's a popular saying lately, we're all in this together. Well, we're all in the same boat when it comes to testings and trials, especially from those who want to entice us and lure us into sin. But notice Jesus also says, but woe unto him through whom they come. And of course, the Lord said this, take heed that you despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven, their angels do always behold the face of my father, which is in heaven. So Jesus here, he's talking about those that entice his children into sin. And notice it says it were better for that person if a millstone were hanged about his neck and he cast into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. And then he says in verse three, take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, forgive him. See, that's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. In verse 4, he says, And if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to thee, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. So Jesus is saying here that forgiveness is not an option. It's a command. And we're going to see why it is uh, so important for us to forgive others as we go along in this study today. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said this, Therefore, if you are presenting your offering at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your offering there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and present your offering. And the reason being is this, that the one has sinned against his brother and has not made it right, he is in sin. So failing to forgive somebody for aught against you or something that you have done to them, amen, is not right before God. And because we're not right before God, then whatever offering we make to the Lord uh, is not going to be accepted. So it's so important for us to walk in forgiveness. And I know it's hard to do especially when you have brothers that uh, that you think, man, that brother loves me. And then your heart is I'd be willing to die for that brother, you know, and he'll come up and give you a big fellowship hug. Amen. And he's not really loving you. All he's doing is he's looking for that soft spot, soft space around your uh, back. So that that's the place where he's going to plunge his knife. 
I've been there before, haven't you? And it's a hard place. But see, we have to forgive. If we have the Spirit of God on the inside of us, then we do have the power to forgive somebody for that which, whatever it is, that which they've done to us. Amen. All we need to add is our will to do that. And of course, when we talk about and we think about all that God has forgiven us of, our will should be, should be to forgive others. And then once again, Jesus says this, cleanse first. He was talking this to the Pharisees. He says, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Amen. So there's too many in the church world today. Uh, they're all clean and white on the outside but not on the inside. Which is better, to be clean on the inside and to be a little dirty on the outside? You see, we want to take offense at people at the way they dress when they come to church, how they wear their hair, how they do this, and many other things. But when we look on the inside of them, what do we see? We see somebody that's clean and white. Amen. God has so thoroughly dealt with them through the power of the Holy Spirit Praise God that they are ready for heaven. So we don't need to be judging others from the exterior. We need to judge them from the interior. Amen. Hallelujah. And then Jesus, and I mean, Luke goes on and he records this in verse five. And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Amen. In other words, Lord, I need something more in order to do what you just said. But Jesus said basically what he's saying. No, you don't. Because I'm the one that supplies the power to forgive by the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of it. All you have to supply is the will to do it. And this is what the Lord says here. He says, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. And so Paul wrote, writing to the Roman church, he says, this, whatever is not of faith is sin. So that tells us right there that forgiveness is an act of faith. I mean, you may be hurt to the core. You may be angry. But yet God says you are to forgive. And so we have to do it by faith. We, we can't do it by our feelings. Amen. If we went by our feelings, we'd be a mess all the time. No, we've got to go by faith. And of course, you know, Jesus said this and Mark records this in, in chapter 11. Truly, I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, be thou uh, taken up and cast into the sea and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will come to pass. He'll have whatever whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. And then he says, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. You know, many years ago, I went to uh, went to work. I'm actually I moved my family over 100 miles uh, to work for this individual. This is when I was early in the ministry, just getting going. And uh, so I moved my family up there. You know, he promised couldn't didn't promise me a salary. I wasn't really looking for a salary. All I was looking for was a good pastor that I could work underneath that I could learn from. And so he promised me, you know, that he would give me gas money. Well, he did that one time. And I was with him now for, oh, for several months. And uh, and after six months, he resigned, left me up in that place all by myself. You talk about a hard time. Boy, I tell you what. Now, that tested me whether or not I had the metal to stay into the ministry. But, you know, I adopted an attitude towards that man of God. And I remember one day, years later, here I am riding down the road and I start thinking about this brother and, and I'm behind the steering wheel. And and I, I tell you what, I just in my mind, I started giving him the what for. And I remember in my mind saying, boy, if he was right here, I'd give him a piece of my mind. And then all of a sudden I caught myself. I, I caught myself what I was doing. And I said, Lord, you just have to forgive me. 
Lord, you just have to forgive me. Well, the spirit of God spoke up on the inside of me. He says, now, when you forgive him, then I'll forgive you. See, forgiveness is not an option. It's a command. So if we do not forgive, we are not going to be forgiven. And I, I, I don't know about you, but I know about me. I do not want to have to stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and give an account to him for something or somebody that I failed to forgive in this life. That would not be a very good thing. So walking in love and forgiveness, it is expected. And Jesus goes on, he says, but which of you having a servant plowing or feeding cattle will say unto him by and by when he has come from the field, go and sit down to meet. And will not rather say unto him, make ready wherewith I may sup and gird thyself and serve me till I have eaten and drunken and afterward thou shalt eat and drink. Now, this is very important. Doth he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? No. So likewise you, now this is verse 10, this is the key. So likewise you, when you shall have done all those things which are commanded you, notice that, which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do. So what is our duty to do? It's to forgive. The only rewards that we're going to receive when we forgive is that we will be forgiven. That is our reward. Amen. Praise God. So Jesus here, he is saying to his disciples, you forgive and you love one another. That's your duty to do it. That's your matter of course. And only that which you do beyond the call of duty, beyond that which is your duty to do, is going to be recognized and is going to be received and given special commendation. So that is our duty. It is to forgive. And so we have to forgive others, but we also have to be forgiven. We have to receive forgiveness. There's things that we hold out against us that Jesus has already forgiven us for. If Jesus has forgiveness, then we can forgive ourselves. And I know we've done some pretty cruel things. I know we've done some pretty dark things. I know we have. All of us have. But Jesus, when we asked him to forgive us, not only did he forgive us, he cleansed us. And he'll never remind us of those things. Although times, times and multiplied times, we'll remind of ourselves of those things. Jesus never will. Amen. So we need to understand the forgiveness of God towards you, towards me, towards man. Amen. If if a sinner is dead in trespasses and sins, then it is understood that God bases his forgiveness based upon the demands of his holiness through punishment and judgment. And that means that we have offended God through sin. We have offended him and he has every right, every just right to punish us because we have. Amen. Insulted and transgressed his holiness. But see, in the Old Testament, the Lord supplied a means by which man, even though he sinned, could receive forgiveness. In other words, his sins would be covered. In the Levitical law, it says, and he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. And so shall he do with this and the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. See, God has always provided a way of forgiveness. Amen. So man's sin, and we're talking about sinners now, we're talking about you and me. We're talking about not in, in, in a Christian context, but in the fact that we're all of us were born in sin. So we're looking at that and we're looking at this as man's sin. So in the Old Testament, man sent through the proper sacrifice was covered. That was a temporary condition. God instituted the system of sacrifice. Amen. To alleviate sin in a person and cover his sin and also a means by which God would forgive them and they could come out 
clean, even though it was temporarily. Notice what Paul says here in Romans chapter 3, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness, God's righteousness, because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. Now, when you as an act of your faith forgive somebody who has wronged you, amen, God looks at that as a demonstration of his righteousness. Because to be honest with you, in yourself and in myself, we don't have the power to do that. It takes the Spirit of God working in us, granting us and giving us the power to walk in forgiveness. And that is a powerful thing for us to understand and to contemplate. So now we're talking about sinfulness now and the need for forgiveness. Under this condition, sacrifice was necessary in order to delay punishment and judgment for sin. Think about that. God delays punishment and he delays judgment to give man the opportunity to repent and receive forgiveness. In the Old Testament, different sacrifices, they were ordained, depending upon the gravity of the sin committed, but that every sin when the sacrifice was offered was covered for a time through the acceptable sacrifice offered. God covered that man or that woman. Amen. But one thing we need to realize about sin is it always costs us. The commission of sin always costs us. Doesn't cost God. Costs us. But that the commission of sin, in the, especially in the ultimate, the, the offender had to do something in order to be forgiven. And that's true not only in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament. So the Lord God established forgiveness of sin. It was based upon the divine covenants that he enacted with the children of Israel. Now, the Gentiles who were outside the covenants were excluded. But a Gentile who submitted to the laws of Moses and converted to Judaism was considered a part of the nation and was circumcised according to the law. So, and here's another thought too. There's something we need to understand. The severity of the punishments the Lord meted out upon the heathen Canaanites serves us and everyone in the whole wide world, serves as a warning that God will not spare. He will not ignore sin. He will not ignore it forever. He will punish the transgressor for his sin. However, God will forgive sin and his power and his forgiveness has power to transform a sinner in response. Amen. In the Old Testament, response to being willingness to, to provide the sacrifice, amen, and to be forgiven in the New Testament, simple faith in Christ is all that is required for forgiveness. Amen. Acts chapter 8, 35 through 38. Now let's look at the New Testament. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on the way, talking about the, uh, the eunuch, they came unto a certain water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said... If you believe with all of your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <laughs> hey, that's the only requirement. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized. So forgiveness of sin in the new covenant is based upon the redemptive work of Christ, which he did. His sacrifice upon the cross, paid the penalty. And God, just like, just like God in the Old Testament, passed over, amen, judgment of the Jews because of the blood that they had applied to the doorposts. So God, through Christ, passes over our sins 
And through simple faith in Christ, he forgives us. Romans chapter 5, verses 20 and 21 says, And the law came in that the transgression might increase, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So for the believer who sins, we're talking about somebody who's accepted Christ and they sin. There is forgiveness and cleansing of sin, but it's all based upon the merits of what Christ did on the cross. Through faith in the sacrifice of Christ, the penitent enters into the new covenant, somebody who just comes into the family of God. He receives forgiveness that are past. Now that he's born again, the blood of Jesus Christ is applied to his heart by faith. The sins that were committed and confessed will be cleansed and washed away. Amen. We don't have to go by and try to remember every sin that we ever committed. They're all covered. They're all washed away by the blood of Jesus through simple faith in him. And see, now that we're believers in Christ, our union with him through his death, burial, and resurrection presents each believer as perfect in Christ, not perfect in ourselves, perfect in Christ. We've entered into, our life is hid with Christ and God. In other words, our life is hid in the perfection of Christ because now we're under his umbrella of grace and mercy. Now we're under his law, a new law. It's called the law of Christ. And we will never come into condemnation again. Every born again believer will never enter into condemnation. He is passed from death to life. He now walks in newness of life. And now our commission is to do this, to walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Forgiving somebody for something that they have done to you, that's walking in the spirit. Even though we don't feel like it, we do it by faith. That's walking in the spirit. Romans chapter eight, verse one says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So since Jesus has borne all of our sin on the tree, every born again believer stands justified from sin and stands complete in Christ. There's nothing left that needs to be done. Amen. Salvation now has become a finished work. It became a finished work on, on the cross when Jesus said it's finished. It's become real to us through the preaching of the gospel and our recognizing that we cannot save ourselves. We need Christ to come into our heart and life. So we come in, we repent, praise God, and God forgives us. Now there's an example of forgiveness being a command of God and that is a part of the law of Christ. Amen. The fact that if we've been forgiven, then we are to forgive those that trespass against us. Amen. Jesus said that. But if we don't forgive, it will not be forgiven. There's an example here in Matthew chapter 18. Notice uh, in verse 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I don't say to you up to seven times, but 70 times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a certain king who wished to settle accounts with the slaves. And when he had begun to settle them, there was brought to him one who owed him 10,000 talents. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children and all that he had in repayment to be made. Think about those that are going to stand at the white throne judgment. Think of the rich man who closed his eyes in death and woke up in hell. Think about that. Amen. And the Lord of that slave, no, no, let's back up. And the slave, therefore, falling down, prostrated himself before him, saying, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. That's what God did towards you. And he did towards me. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owned him a hundred denarii. And he seized him and began to choke him, saying, pay back what you owe. 
So his fellow slave fell down and began to entreat him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you. He was unwilling, however, but went and threw him in prison until he should pay back what was owed. So when his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were deeply grieved and came and reported to their Lord all that had happened. Then summoning him, his Lord said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you entreated me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow slave, even as I had mercy on you? And his Lord moved with anger, handed him over to the torturers until he should repay all that was owed him. Now listen to this. So shall my heavenly father also do to you if each one of you does not forgive his brother from your heart. And that Jesus was talking to his disciples concerning that. That's how important it is for you and I to walk in forgiveness. Now listen, now listen to this, Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men, then your Father will not forgive you your transgressions. And then Paul wrote this to the Colossian church, bearing with one another and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. And then Luke records this in chapter 6. And do not judge, and you will not be judged. And do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Pardon, and you will be pardoned. Now listen to this. This is a verse of scripture we use popularly when we're taking up offerings. But it applies not just to money. It implies to what you and I do by faith when it comes to forgiveness. Give, and it will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Man will pour into your lap. For if your standard of measure, whatever you measure out, will be measured to you again. Think about that in the context of forgiveness. If somebody wrongs you and you forgive them, there is good measure, pressed down, shaken together, coming back towards you. There's an abundance of grace and mercy coming back towards you. God will ensure that you have more than enough grace, more than enough mercy. Amen. If we walk in forgiveness. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we don't judge. We don't condemn. We pardon. Amen. We don't hold up and count against man's transgressions against us. We forgive them. Amen. Now, you may have to separate yourself from that individual. He's proved to be a very unworthy friend, but at the same time, you don't desire anything evil to come upon that person. You check your feelings right then. Any little bit of angst, any bit of ill will that comes up against you, you judge it right then. You don't, you don't act upon that. You act upon what the Word of God says. And if you keep doing that, doing that by faith, doing that by faith, amen, that hurt, that angst, that anger that's on the inside of you, eventually the Holy Spirit will wash it all away. Amen. And that won't affect you. You see, and we need to do that personally with things that we have done. We're talking about dark things. Things that when they come up in our memory, we just have to hang our head in shame. Amen. Listen, God has forgiven us those things. Forgive yourself. We need to learn to forgive ourselves of those things that we have done that were not of God. Amen. So do yourself a great, great, great service and a great, great, great favor. Just follow me in this simple prayer. Heavenly Father, others have transgressed against me, but Lord, by, as an act of faith, I just forgive them now in the name of Jesus. And I know, Lord, there's many things I've done in my past that have offended you. And Lord, I'm ashamed of them. But Father, you forgave me of those things when I repented. And so, Lord, as an act of faith, I forgive myself. And I walk out of that bondage, Lord. 
Amen. I walk out of that jail cell. I will no longer hold myself in prison. I walk out. I'm free. You forgave me. I forgive myself. Now I'm free. And I thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.